Nerdy Girl here with another vintage haul video. This is a bit of a combined haul, uh, mostly from the flea market, but I do have a couple of garage sale finds and uh, some more donations from friends who are, they just love the fact that they can get me to take stuff, just come to their house and take stuff away. So I do it. Uh, anyway, um, I guess I will show you the jewelry that I got at the flea market first and then the jewelry my friend gave me and then I'll move on from there. So um, the first thing is that I bought a jewelry bag, but it was only five dollars and she told me ahead of time that it was it was mostly broken and um, you know stuff for crafting or uh, harvesting stones or whatever, but I thought five dollars for a big bag was not too bad of a price. So this is what's left. I, I threw a bunch of it away, like not even good for crafting. Um, but this is what I'm going to use uh, to either harvest stones or craft with. That being you know, kind of an unrealistic thing because I haven't crafted in ages, but maybe I'll start again. Uh, let's see. There were some, some usable uh, or you know, wearable things that I'll probably try to sell. This is a really pretty little bangle with black beads wrapped around it. I thought this was a nice modernist pen. It is, um, it looks like it's hand hammered, but I don't think it's silver. I haven't tested it, but I don't think it is. But it's nice looking. And it's, it's nicely made. So I think I can sell that. Um, oops. This is a nice cloisonne belt buckle. And I sell a piece of cloisonne every once in a while. This one's really pretty with the butterfly, and I like the black. I have sold these before, so. I assume it'll sell at some point. And um, this is a, a Napier brooch. It has one little stone missing. Easy fix. Um, you know, it won't sell for a lot, but I'll get a little something for it. This was my favorite piece out of the lot. It's this leaf necklace. Isn't that pretty? And it is broken. It's missing, like, the chain from this side. But... Here's how I'm going to fix that. I also got this necklace, which I think is really ugly. <laughs> it's really weird. So I think I'm going to use the chain ends from this on that leaf necklace. I don't know. That's just weird. And then I got this pair of, uh, let's see, these have a name on them somewhere, I think. Oh yeah, they're Trafari. Wait, let me take them out of the thing so you can see them. They're just these kind of clip-on, paisley, big old things. Trafari. These are newer, like 1980s. And then I got a trio of little leaf brooches that I think that I will sell in a lot. They're very mid-century looking, and they're all in pretty nice condition. Oops. And uh, a pair of earrings. But they, you know, they're not really all that great. I don't know. Okay. So that's that. Oh, this is nice, too. Um, this looks pretty old. It's a little stick pen with a faux pearl. So I might, uh, I might try to sell that on its own. Okay, then also at the flea market, I got this, which I paid too much for. But it was so cute, I just couldn't walk away from it. It's this charm bracelet. I think these are pewter, and it's all these little people, like this uh, organ grinder, and a, a roller skating girl, and a policeman, and a shoe shine guy, and um, a news newsboy seller type, and I don't know what this one is. That's you know, is that the policeman. That's the policeman. I don't know what the other one is. Well, anyway. Um, I just thought it was really cute. It's probably 1950s, I would say. And, um, I don't know. I paid $5 for it. It's crazy. Crazy! Uh, I got this... Sorry for the traffic noise. I got this necklace, which I just thought was kind of pretty. I love this chain. This little book... Kind of a miniature book chain. Um, but I don't... You know, that... Those book chains are very Victorian in style, but this necklace is not old. It's you know, probably an 80s. Although it does have a J-hook. That's usually an older necklace. I don't know. 
no name on it or anything. But anyway, I think I paid a dollar for that. And then from the same lady, I got this nice chunky gold chain. This is Irwin Pearl, which is a good maker. Um, prices are all over the place on Irwin Pearl jewelry, but this is in really just immaculate condition. Really nice. Um, maybe 1970s. And then I got a nice big old chunky rhinestone brooch. This is a Weiss, and it's in really nice condition. And I paid seven for that, I think. Seven or eight. And then this, I probably overpaid for this. But, uh, yeah, I bought this and the charm bracelet from the same lady. Her prices are just, in general, a little high for me for resale. But she's such a nice lady, and we get on so well that I end up buying stuff from her that I shouldn't. But I did love this brooch. This is probably a 1930s brass. Um, it's got a C clasp. That's kind of kind of loosey goosey. But anyway, got nice riveted construction. I paid 15 for that. <laughs> Uh, let's see, is that all? Oh no, I've got some rings. Oh, I have this brooch. I love this brooch. This is a um, Norwegian sterling guilloche enamel ship brooch. I just thought that was really pretty. I think I paid 10 for that. I might have paid 15. But I think I paid 10. Um, I got this interesting ring, which is a mystic topaz and it's topaz that's been heat treated or chemically treated or somehow to make it do those colors and I was just fascinated with it I couldn't put it down that's always a bad sign I'm not even sure how old it is or anything but I paid 20 bucks for it it is in sterling silver with marcasites and it looks kind of art deco so I don't know it's um it's marked SF and it seems like I know that mark 925. Anyway. Crazy. Uh, this is a sterling silver ring. Nice metal work. And I paid 10 for that one. And uh, this is another one of these kind of multi stone rings that I really like. This is citrine, garnet, and smoky topaz. They're nice big stones, and I paid 15 for that one and it's in sterling silver. And that's all the jewelry. I think that is all the jewelry. Uh, I'll show you the stuff that my friend gave me. This is a very nice uh, double strand of crystal. No, triple strand. Crystal beads. It's a particularly nice set. I have a lot of this that I haven't listed. It doesn't sell very well. And it has a, a bracelet that goes with it. The clasp on the bracelet is marked sterling. And then there are some earrings also. Oh, the other one's inside the bag, so I can't get it out, but that's what the earrings look like. And um, they're, you know, it's a very nice set. And it's in good condition, so I don't know. And then uh, she also gave me some of these stone, these uh, shells that uh, the name of this type of shell is escaping me, but I will find out by the time I edit the video and I'll put the name in. It's like these stones that they use, or uh, shells that they used in Victorian jewelry. And uh, I just sold a bunch of them. But these ones already have the little hardware in them to make them charms or pendants. So three of those um, she gave me. <laughs> this is all, almost all gold. It, and it's, I think it is all gold for scrap. It's all broken orphan earrings, uh, rings with no stones, and uh, and some gold teeth. Gold teeth. <laughs> I took I took that out of the bag and I was going, what is this? What is this? Ugh. Ugh. Anyway, but somebody's gold teeth. Gross. Gold is gold. Um, oh, I forgot to show you these in the. Um, the grab bag of jewelry, there's a couple of pairs of earrings that I thought were pretty that I would keep and wear for a while. One of them was this. 
They're um, just some brass and enamel studs, no name. And then these little dangly pink glass ones. Pretty, pretty typical of the stuff that I like to wear. So. But, um, and this is this is a box of little um, clutchback pins and badges and stuff. Most of it will probably get thrown away, but some of it are ski ski uh, pins and those are people collect those. So. I have a, a lot of them started that she gave me a bunch of before. Um, okay, now I really am done with the jewelry. Um, let's see. I'll show you my garage sale purchases real fast because there's just a couple. I got this. I think it's like a not any particular kind of metal <laughs> reproduction teapot, but it's really pretty. It's Chinese with the um, now, the, I had a guy look at this at the flea market because I wasn't sure what it was. I wanted to make sure it wasn't old before I sold it too cheap. And I, it's not. But um, he said he thought this was supposed to look like hand-painted porcelain. But I have an actual antique one of these that somebody told me it was hand-painted rice paper behind glass. So I don't know. It looks hand-painted to me. But I got that at a garage sale for $3. And I got this also at the garage sale for three dollars. It's the same kind of thing. They're vintage but not old. And then actually I got these three things for ten dollars. So a little over three dollars. And I got this really pretty porcelain box. Little trinket box. And this is marked uh, Bohemian porcelain. So you know me and my trinket box. Box of eleven. Okay, so that's all the garage sale stuff, and um, let's see, flea market stuff. Uh, I bought these bowls. These are actually for me. I like to eat my cereal out of these kind of bowls. <laughs> so whenever I can find them for a good price, I buy them. So there were four of these, and each one's different. They're all made in China, but they're, they have the, the Chinese markings on the bottom, which is kind of neat. third one. I already have four or five of them. And there's the fourth one. Aren't they pretty? I just really like them. Okay, then I got this purse. Hard to turn down a nice vintage purse. And it's, um, let's see if I can get it open. Here we go. Looks like it's never been used. It's really clean. It is a um, uh, Guild Guild original. I'm sure it's 1940s tonight. Probably 1940s. Uh, it's got some rhinestone. And this is like kind of darkened. It's like gold with black. But I honestly think it's like that on purpose. I don't think it's worn because nothing else on the purse is worn. So I think that's what's intended to look like. And then, oh, oh, another piece of jewelry I forgot to show you. Sorry. This is more from my friend. This is a pair of 14 karat gold and sapphire, tiny little sapphires. <laughs> so, that's cute. I bought this ukulele, which is, <laughs> uh, it's, it's distressed. It's got a big crack here. The neck has been broken and re-glued, and I actually bought this thinking I would use it as a mosaic project, and it was only $3. But then I'm thinking, if it were tuned, it would be playable. I don't know if I can ruin it by making it mosaic. And it's got these cute little swans on it. And look, this is what I really love about it. You think somebody didn't love this ukulele and play it a lot? It's got wear back here from the hand being on it. And Somebody loved this ukulele so much. So sad. Uh, oh, okay, okay, I got some paintings behind me. Let me show you those. This one. It's an original, not an original. This is a, a lithograph print. 
by somebody named Van Acker, who may or may not be a famous Van Acker artist. It looks pretty old, still involved in research. If it is a Van Acker print, um, it's not numbered or anything, but it is pencil signed. It, um, it could be worth a little something. And then I got some, a pair of these original watercolors. These were five apiece. And the artist is Diaz. I think this is more like souvenir artwork. I don't think it's anything too special. There is a famous artist named Diaz who did some watercolors in Spain, but um, I don't think this is his work. It just doesn't look quite right. But I thought they were pretty, you know, and for five a piece, goodness, I can hardly go wrong with that. And they're, um, they're of the cities of Cordova and Seville, which are two places I visited when I went to Spain. Oh, where am I? Um, okay, I got these scrapbooks from my friend Larry, who is my age, and this, these are the scrapbooks that his mother kept for him, and they have like every birthday card he got as a small child, and all like his birth announcement, you know, congratulations on your new baby cards, dozens and dozens and dozens of them, and they're so funny and kitschy. So I'm going to, I'm taking the um, scrap, I can't believe he didn't keep them, but he's like a, he's kind of a nomad. He doesn't keep much stuff. So um, look at this. Here you have a baby boy. Ah, oh, they're so cute. So I'm going to make a big, you know, scrapbooking lot out of all these. I just, at night, as I'm watching TV, I can tear up the scrapbook. Makes me sad, but I'll do it anyway. Um, and then I have some more paintings to show you, but they're big, so I'm going to move the camera. I'll be right back. Okay. This is the first one. Get down here where you can see it. And uh, this is by an artist named Roberta Clare. And that's her signature. And she is a listed artist, and she's pretty well known. And her, she, she apparently does nothing but these seascapes. And um, I, uh, her paintings appear to sell in the low hundreds, like two to three hundred dollars. So that's one. It's very nicely framed. And then, uh-oh, this one's turned backwards. How am I going to show this to you? Let's see. Maybe you can see it this way. Well, this is not ideal, but um, anyway, uh, this artist is also fairly well known. His name is Charles Beauvais. And uh, his paintings also sell in the, um, well, I saw some that were listed for sale, like close to $1,000, but I don't think, uh, I don't think I'll get that. And then the, these are two violins. Um, I'm not going to open these up right now, but there are violins in here. And they're in very nice condition. They're not real old, but they're not new either. And then there's the sorry, the um, bows that go with them. One of them's one of them's kind of uh, not in good shape, but the other one's good. Oops, sorry, camera strap. Sorry, I forgot to show you one other thing. This is a Chinese embroidery on silk of a cat. Oh, boy, can't really see this very well, can you? There's the cricket. There's a kitty cat and a cricket, and it's on silk, and it's in this round frame. And then, here's what's really cool. You turn it around, and it's another cat, a different color cat, the mirror image of the first cat. And um, believe it or not, these are very common. I thought it was something so unique, and they're very common. But this is an older one, and it, it did used to be in a frame, that you could spin, you could just spin it around and, well, anyway. Um, so I'm gonna try and figure out some way that you can hang it and flip it to view whichever side you want. But I paid $8 for that. <laughs> Look at his little face. It's beautiful embroidery. Look at that. I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's so nice. 
So there you have it. Thank you, Muffin. That's it? That's all you're going to give me today? Well, there she is, sleeping on a clean towel, of course. All right. Goodbye. Okay. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Here. <laughs> I don't usually do it like this, but thanks for watching. And these items are or soon will be for sale in my Etsy shop at vintagedazzle.etsy.com or on eBay where my name is Carol Lennox and the links are down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And if, um, if you care to make a comment, I will try to respond to all comments. I do my best. All right, thanks. I will see you next time. Bye.